Okay. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Amazing. I'm very excited, actually, to be here. And first of all, I want to say thank you um, to Mark for inviting me and everyone else, and also for the donation that the Skeptic Society has given for the Women's Refuge, because that's an amazing association. Anyway, now first of all, I like talking, so they have to cop me on. So um, anyway, first of all, I was told by many people not to come here. You know, and I said, well, why not? Why not? You know, I think I believe in healthy discussion. Okay, and we all have our opinions, and that's absolutely great. Because you know what? I'm skeptic about some things, which we'll talk about in a moment. You know, I don't believe in some things. And um, so today, I'm just going to show you the glimpse of my world, okay? I'm not here to prove anything to anyone. I'm not here to actually convince you. We all have our thoughts, we all have our ideas, and that's how the world goes around, and it's great. So first of all, let me just start off. Um, people want to know what I actually do. But I don't see dead, no, there's no dead people in here who are alive, okay? I can't see one. I cannot see one dead people sitting here, in here. I do not go around, you know, looking for dead people, right? I don't do that. So I do see them when I'm working, right? And so I hear, see, and feel. And I'll go back to when I was a child, okay? Why God gave me this, we don't know, why me, we don't know. But anyway, I was about four years old, and um, I remember I'd come from England, okay? I didn't come from a very, my father, he was the most skeptic person ever, I'm telling you now, couldn't stand black people, couldn't stand religion, couldn't do, you know? And uh, so it was a very hard household for me, okay? So I was born in a very strange place. They thought I was strange. I thought I'd been dropped off at the wrong place, honestly. So anyway, I was about four years old, and uh, we didn't have much money. We had no running water. We had no toilet in the house. I had to go down the road to the toilet. And so I got a very good bladder because at night time, we just didn't want to go out there. And um, it was very, very hard. And so I was four years old, and I remember crying. I used to sleep in the attic. And I was crying, wishing that somebody would come and comfort me. And I remember seeing this um, man, to me, who looked so real, by the window as the light was coming through. And I looked at him and he walked over to me. And um, he just comforted me. But I noticed his clothes were really, really old fashioned. So I never thought anything of it. And as time went by, I would just get, my father would take lots of photographs. And I would put them all on the floor. And I was fascinated with them. I put my hand on them. And all of a sudden, I don't know where it's coming from, I get messages. I get things about these people. And I remember saying to my dad one day, because I saw a picture of this man, and I said to him, who is this person? I've seen him in my bedroom. And he said, no. Couldn't have seen him. Like the rubbish. Couldn't have seen him. That's your great great grandfather. He's dead. He's gone a long time. We don't know him. Whatever. So I thought, okay, need to keep my mouth shut. And then the biggest time I remember reading, I was five years old. My mother had my sister. And she was very early in the hospital. And when they brought my sister home, she lay on this settee and um, I just laid by her side. I don't know where it was coming from, but I had a voice saying to me, you must get your mother now. Your sister's very, very ill. So I went to my mom and I said, Mom, the baby's very, very ill. You have to come now. She told me to leave her, leave your sister alone and watch the chair. Just stop touching her. And I started to rub her feet and her hands. When again, told me to leave her. Just get away from her. Third time, it was like they were shouting at me. Anyway, my mother finally came over and my sister had gone, and they had to revive her. Now, if I'd actually just sat down and watched the television, she wouldn't be here now. So I started to see things, I knew things. When I went to school, didn't have many friends because um, we played hide and seek and go find them. I just knew where they were. And so, friends didn't like that. 
And um, so it was, it was very, it's been very, very lonely. You know, and people ask me, well, you know, why have you got that? I believe we're all different and we're all born with a psychic ability. There is not one person in this room who's never known the phone's going to ring. Or the phone's going to ring, or the guy feeling I'm going to see someone, and you see them in the street. Okay. There are all degrees. I see a lady there. No, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying everybody, right? But most people have. And the thing is, right, a lot of people don't want to know it. A lot of people are frightened of it. Okay? But you know, there's more to heaven and earth than we know about. Okay? And, but I do know, we'll all go to the same place, whether we like it or not. Okay? No matter what religion you are, we all end up at the same place. Right? Now, I have people from all different areas that actually ever go in. I get, yeah, the Skeptic Society, that's fine. I get the church. I mean, who gets chucked out of the church? And I've been chucked out of the church. I, I, I'm a Christian. I don't have to go, you don't, I believe you don't have to go to church to believe, okay? But sometimes we just need that peace. And somebody asked me once and they said, um, look, I'm going to this new church. Do you want to come? I said, well, I don't know if they like me there. Okay, so anyway, I went because I like the music and everything. So afterwards, we went and she said, we're going to have a cup of tea. And uh, this lady walks up to me, she goes, um, hi, hello, what are you? you're new to this church? I said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm new. What do you do? I thought, here you goes, here we go. I said, I'm psychic medium. She went, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Moved back, it's like. And then all the others started to gather around me and start bullying me. Told me to get out of the church and never ever come again. And so I said, okay, fine, fair enough. And the next day, they got hold of my phone number and I started to have abusive calls. I said, you must be a bit stupid because I'm psychic and I know who you are. And I'll come round to your church and I'll hassle you. How would you like that? Okay, I'll come and hassle you in your congregation, right? And so the phone call stopped. And so I didn't come out of this spiritual closet, so to speak, okay, for some time. I kept it to myself because I knew the consequences. If you're telling people, I know this and I see this, you get very strange looks, you know? It's not acceptable and it wasn't acceptable in my house. And now I have my brother and sister. They don't have anything to do with me whatsoever, okay? So I do have my own family members that don't want really to know me. It's been very hard, but I can't help the way they think. I can't help the way people look at me and think that I'm strange. I am who I am. And to me, it's very normal because it's like somebody says to me, what's it like being like that? It's like saying to somebody, born blind, what's it like not being able to see? Well, you won't know because you've never been able to see. So to me, this is normal. And so, you know, um, when Spirit says to me, this is another thing you'll like, they said I'm going to a far away place called New Zealand. I thought, well, I'm going to go there, okay? Probably because I was meant to come and talk to you today. But anyway, I've been here 35 years now, and this is my home. Um, I find English people a bit um, stuck in their ways. I'm not saying anyone. But I wouldn't be doing my work that I do here, over there, okay. Um, there is that saying which you palm sometimes that you get. But anyway, um, and so, Spirit says to me, okay, the Spirit, whatever you call it, the voices in the ether out there, said it's time to come out. And the thing is, I suppose I look at it like you're gay and you're coming out of the closet. You don't have backlash. Not everybody's going to understand. They've probably got the law now for um, same marriage that we've got in here, which I think is really good. And so people criticise you, same as gay people. And so, you know, it's been very, very hard. Now what I want to talk to you about, and um, it makes me think when people go, 
cold reading. What the hell that is, I don't know, but anyway. Um, cold reading. Now we're going to talk about, which a lot of people have, you, have seen it, is sensing murder, right? Sensing murder. And so I'm just going to explain to you how that works, right? Now, first of all, you're put in a room, okay? And you have a photo upside down, you've got the camera crew, and you've got the people in the room, and it's packed with people. No one talks to you. They will say to you, do you want a cup of tea or a drink of water before we start, okay? So we sit there, I sit there. Now, I can't talk for anybody else. I'm talking about myself. I can't talk about other mediums, but I will do in a moment, because there's some out there who are charlatans, and I, I, I think there's some out there who are really bad, and they really piss me off, excuse me, right? Because they give other people a bad name. Anyway, so, um, sit in a room, they patch you a photo upside down with black on the back so you can't see anything, okay? When you're ready, go. They do not say a word to you. Now, you see this, and okay, it may be edited, you, and like, yeah, it would be edited because I work for 12 hours on those shows. 12 hours a time. Now, I work, there is no eye contact, there is no one telling me. Sorry, you're wrong. You're right. Yes, no. I can put my hand on my heart and I've even said to people, I will literally be pushed with a lie detector that you ask me any question about sensing murder or anything you want to ask me. Right? I have no fear of that. And so, if they were going to talk about the case, they will actually go out of the room so I can't hear them. Then, I give you a big map of New Zealand and roll it out in front of you. You've got to look up, is the person, has the person been found? Um, you know, are they still missing? Where did they live? Where was their last address? If the body was found, it shows on the map, etc. And that's for 12 hours. I, I just want to talk, I think he's a, I like Darren Gray. I think he's really good, I love watching him, okay? But I would put it to Darren Brown, okay? I've seen a program where he sits there, okay? And you'll go, okay, let's have a bit of it. It's like a guessing game. I've got your grandfather here. Would that be correct? Is this, this, and that? I would put him in a room with a photo upside down and say, go for it for 12 hours. There you go. Let's see what you can do. I don't think you'd manage it. It's okay him sitting there saying this, that, and the other. But when it comes to that real test, we're going to look at if he could do it. And a lot of people say, I oh, could do that. But could you? I don't know, you might do don't know. Okay? So let's talk about, um, now I know what's going through your head here. How many cases you sold? There must be psychic. Some of you thinking that at the moment. I can feel that in the end. Okay? Well, there is one at the moment, which I worked on, called Sarah Niche, okay? Mark Packner, who's in prison at the moment, okay? The police don't really look at what I'm doing, basically. I don't know what they do with the information, okay? I don't know if they put it filed somewhere or what they do. I go in there, do what I've got to do, and get back out again. That's what I do. And so, Again, we're going to look at, as well, people who say they're psychics or mediums, whatever they want to call themselves, and, you know, they're charlatans. And there are people out there now who are good builders, bad builders, as good doctors, bad doctors, doctors who even cut people's limbs off and got the wrong limb, okay? But the thing is, right, Sometimes I'm going to get, and the other thing is, I want to say to you, people think I charge all the time. Nobody knows what I do. I actually don't charge people all the time. And there's people who have a job here. You go to work from nine to five and you get paid for it, right? You don't go in there for nothing. But I don't charge people all the time. I worked with a family yesterday for two hours. I didn't ask them for a cent. I do charity work as well. And I give them money to charity. And so, 
It's all right, I'm just going to change the thought. Oh, um, the mood cases, yeah. So I've done 14 altogether. So you're thinking, I'll start feeling good here, right? One out of 14. But anyway, you know, the police do with whatever they want to do with it. And I let it go, right? I don't bother with it. Now, there are people out there who give other people a bad name. And what they do is they'll say to them, oh, there's this big black entity attached to you. And it's doing this and it's doing that. And they're petrifying people. And then they'll say, pay me so much and I'll get rid of it for you. Okay? So then they, they phone me up or talk to me. And I, I say, we'll just pop around to my office. Well, just have a look. I go, you know what? There's nothing there. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I can't even see anything. Right? And so, you know, people are very vulnerable, which I agree. You know, we'd all be talked to for something if we wanted. And so, you know, that's what there are out there. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, I'm a counsellor as well. I do counselling. I also do house blessings. I go to people's houses and see what's going on. Sometimes they think there's spirits in my house. I go, no, there's not. There's actually underlying things in there that are going on with the energy between the couple or the children. I go into places where there's a lot of abuse. Okay, and sometimes the children will try and switch off and actually they can think there's someone there trying to help them, right? And so there are many things, you know, but we can never explain everything, you know? We're never gonna know everything, and I don't know everything, okay? So when we look at it, um, sorry, oh, see, the thing is as well, 2020 followed me. I have no problem. They phoned me up and they said, we'd like to record you. We want to watch you. I didn't turn around and say no. I have nothing to hide. So they watched me in my house, my office. They followed me around into people's houses. Okay. And they couldn't find anything. Because there's nothing to be found. I am who I am. Okay. I have a normal life, but this is a gift that was given to me. Okay. Some people say, is it a gift or a curse? I wouldn't say it's a curse. Sometimes it comes in handy. The only thing is I can't get the lotto numbers. You know, I tried, can't get them. And, um, you know, people can be nasty out in the street. You know, I'll be in the supermarket and they say, if you're that woman off the telly, what's my shopping list? I don't know. I don't want to know, actually. I can't be bothered. To me, it's a waste of energy. Why am I going to stand there and bother what they've got on their shopping list? I really don't care. You know? And so, there's the spiritualist churches. I'm not in any group or anything. I keep myself to myself. Um, I do feel that some, I'm not saying everyone, but some of the spiritualist churches are really stuck in their way. If you don't do it this way, you're not in our group. Okay, I can't be bothered with that, okay? And um, I do love it when the, you know, the religious organisations come and knock on my door. I absolutely love a debate. I really love it. And then they'll walk off because they don't know what to say. Okay? So um, it's very interesting, you know, my life as it is. So is there anyone um, would like to ask me any questions? The floor's open. Yep, at the back. Yeah, great. I actually think it's really nice. Yeah, I walked in. I think it's really good. You know, um, as I said before, you know, I, I do respect other people's points of view, you know, because we were, honestly, um, I think I was a philosopher in another life because I love looking into deep, you know, in depth with things. I don't have a university degree, I don't have any school certificates, right? Just who I am. But I love, you know, looking at how in a way how other people operate or their thinking etc you know so walking in here as i said before a lot of people in my position wouldn't do it and i said to them why they i am who i am why not let them know a glimpse of who i am and what i do and so the energy in here is really nice you know
you know. I actually didn't expect it to be because you can set yourself up, you know, you can think, why, okay, because we know thoughts are energy, they're right there in the atmosphere, okay, thoughts are energy and they're there. So if I'm going to set myself up with it, they're going to be horrible to me, they're going to fire things at me, well, I'm, it's going to happen, you know. I believe in every action has a reaction. If I put an action into that thought, and that's going to happen. And so you're all very nice, really. Okay? okay. I do the front. Uh, do you interact with any other signs? You mentioned spiritualist churches, for example. Uh, yeah, no, I don't really. I mean, do you, do you I feel like. Um, no, I've never been um, with an organisation as such, you know, because spiritualist churches are all, all over New Zealand and all over the world. And sometimes I've spoken up against them because I don't really want to say it, you know, so um, you kind of not like them, you know, and so I don't read that. I don't read, I don't, if I need to know something, it will come to me, okay? So I don't read books, I don't read books. Unless it's shown to me and I'm drawn to it, I will read it. But no, I'm not in any organisation. I don't really mix with other psychics as well because I tell you something, sometimes they can be very rigid, you know. <laughs> a backstab, you know, it's, you know, you don't know why, but, you know, it's just the way you, so I keep myself away from them, really. So I suppose when you think about it, it will be odd, you know what I mean? I've got this and I don't mix with them. You know, but um, yeah, it's the way, the way it is, you know. I mean, I do have some friends, a couple of friends that are really, really good. But we don't, when we have a talk, we don't talk about spiritual things. We talk about everyday things, you know what I mean? So we don't sit around talking about this, that, and the other. You know, so yeah, is that answer your question? Okay, uh, we had a question up here. Sorry, yeah. Hi, so there are, um, there are various skeptical organisations around the world who offer um, various challenges which you could accept. Oh, um, so right for say, say Randy's challenge, we have one here in New Zealand where you could um, humiliate us skeptics by winning one of our challenges and demonstrating that actually you do have these powers. So well, what, what, I, would you yeah. agree to be tested? You see, the thing is, that's very interesting because, you know, I'm not saying all you skeptics say we can do it, it's called reading. But how about showing me what you can do? Yeah? If you can, you know, let's put it forward. If Randy is saying anybody can do it, why don't we have somebody who's a skeptic go and do the test? Okay? Yeah, let's, I'm putting the challenge out there to you. Let's put the challenge out there. Alright? <laughs> That's all right. I might do, I might not, you know, I don't know. But um, I've, I've actually been tested with sexy murder. So I've done a lot of tests, okay? And I um, might do it, I might not, I'd say. But I, the thing is, I, I don't have to prove myself to anyone. See, that, that if I wanted to do that, I don't have to. I know what I do, okay? I don't have to go on television and show the whole world what's in an envelope. It's okay, right? It's the people have a problem because they don't understand it and want some proof. It's enough. There you go. Pardon? It's enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a question over okay. here next. Sue, would you like to comment on the fact that like, after two seasons of sense and murder, not a single missing person has been found? Not a, the remains of a single missing person have not been found either. Not a single person has been brought to justice. Uh, I just you, told you that uh, my But Patrick, do you ever feel like trying to tell? Because really, since the murder has been a spectacular, fate, a spectacular failure at trying to solve the crime. Well, what I've just said, Hello, they have one in prison, Mark Packman, if you'd like to have a look. So you stated no one's ever been put in prison. You just stated that. Yeah? Which is wrong. You said to me, nobody's been had off, nobody's been found, nobody this, that, and the other. And I just said to you, there is a person in prison called my packet, Mark Packingham, with Sarah Nish. Have a look at it, okay? I'm going to use the word, 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 I'm going to use the
Well, um, what is actually what I've just said? It, it was a case I worked on on sex and murder. Is it? Um, yeah. Is it prison now? Can we? That's what I've just said. Look, I'm sorry, Mark. We, I, I have said that I don't want to get this. No, you know, you know, I just said what it is. Look it up. Mark Packingham, Sarah Leash, okay? And the evidence I bought, and I said, but we have to be very careful on sensing murder because of legal things, okay? I said it was her ex-partner. And yes, it was edited because they had their legal team to say, we can't put that on television. Okay. Well, the police are all right, I don't, sorry? Well, the police are all right, I don't know, because they don't contact me. They don't contact me. They don't even like psychics, okay? But it's interesting, because they open the case files for sensi murder. Oh, look, the police are all right. Yeah. All right, but okay. I'm actually, no, I'm just going to say, I'm actually working on a very high-profile case now, and we're very close to the person of getting the person who done the murder. So I just wanted to tell you that. Yeah? Where are we going? Yeah. Okay, uh, yes, we have a question over here. So, Hi. thank you. Uh, he stole my question, but never mind, I have another one. Yeah. Um, have you ever done a cold reading with a person who's absolutely passive, non-responsive, non-replying? Well, I don't call them cold reading, so uh, that, that's cut that bit off, yeah. Say, say behind a person behind a screen and, and not a point, say the, the technique used by Ann Rowland. I, I don't, I've never heard of it. You haven't heard of it. Right. So um, I can do readings over the phone where I don't see the people's faces, okay? So I have no contact with them. I would do a reading on, I was on the Good Morning Show for seven years, okay? Where viewers would call in, okay? And then I'd get, I couldn't see the face because we, we don't see that, okay? So you have to explain to me what a cold reading is, I'm sorry, but you explain it to me. Maybe I need to read that book. Yeah. Well, I already do that in, um, when you look at it, sensing murders like that, because there's nobody on contact, if there's nobody there, is there? The, the film crew or the producer isn't giving me any answers. They're not giving me any messages there. Um, I think it would be better if we moved along. Okay, thank you, anyone. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm um, I'm just curious, you said you went to a couple of churches and you were um, kicked out. I would have thought that would be a welcoming environment for you, uh, given that they would believe in. Um, no? No, because, you, you know, let's look at the Catholic Church, for instance. The Catholic Church, you know, if, if we are talking to people who have passed over, they actually say, well, we're, we're actually communicating with the devil, okay? So they don't believe in any of that, okay? So um, they don't like that. But, you know, it's people like that who put Jesus on the cross. Didn't Jesus predict? Didn't he give predictions? Didn't he give healing to people, you know? And there are people out there, you know, who are vulnerable. If they've got cancer, okay, they're going to look everywhere to try and get um, some cure. And I think that if somebody um, had cancer and they said, right, the whoever it was, said, you've got to stand up in the corner three times a day on your head, they do it. I'm sure most of us, if we want to live, we will find a way, right? But people are taking advantage of, you know? Um, there's one I want to comment on, which I watched the documentary, and I was very annoyed about it. I don't know if you've ever heard of John of God in Brazil. I put a very big question mark over him. I've watched him, okay? And there's some of the things he does are not ethical at all. And people spend literally thousands of dollars to go to Brazil, okay, to see him. Okay, do they cure? Are they cured? 
Some of them are not. I watched this documentary and three of the people went over there. Two of them come back. He told them not to take any of the medication. They came back and they died. And that is wrong. I never tell anyone to stop their medication. I don't tell anybody to do whatever. Okay? Everybody has free will. Everybody in this room has the free will to come in here and sit here. Nobody <coughs> drank you, nobody drank me. We all have free will. Everything we do is a free will. Okay? And so the thing is, people will spend a lot of money on things like that. Buy a magic crystal, whatever. And he sells crystals over a lot of money. You know? I was asked, um, he came here to New Zealand probably four or five years ago. My friend said, you're going to John of God. I said, no, I have no intention to go and see him. I actually don't like him. Okay? And she went and she was, there was a pot, well, there was thousands of people, and she said, so disappointed. He sits on a chair in front of the, the room and everybody passes by. And if he thinks you're good enough, he'll touch it. Which means you go in the back room and they talk to you and then you have to come to Brazil. Okay. I said, who is it? You know? The thing is, what right has he got to do that for other people? To other people. But people then find the money to go there. And I do know quite a few people who've been there. And um, but look, everybody is to their own, everybody has their own choices. Okay. You know, and this may come out, and I'm going to get backlash from other spiritual people, or people from John and God, is going to give me a, you know, uh, a good hiding, basically, because I've said this, but, you know, you say what you say, and I say what I say, and that's fine. It's free speech. Hey? We had a question. Oh, sorry, yeah? Uh, it, it, it's all right. So, so I, I fully understand the, the process of getting kicked out of churches. As an astrophysicist, the bullying happens to me as well. It's just reasons. Um, but but you did say that you do consider yourself a Christian, but you also said at a different point you're not a reader. Have you taken the time to, to read the Bible? So yes, I have. I used to go to Sunday school. Okay, so um, tied into this question with, with saying you're not a reader, except when you're directed to, to read things. If you commune with the dead, it seems that you have the most amazing set of educators directing you to read Best why, do to, why do I have to read the Bible? No, no, no I, that's, that was just one question I had if you read it. I do have people think, what, educating me, what, you know, um, in our terms, are guides of people on the other side that actually guide me and they educate me. So I have no interest in reading books. I don't like reading, okay, right? So they will give me information, right? And they will give me information. And sometimes they will see me things that haven't happened. They show me things that haven't happened yet. Okay. And then it comes to fruitation. So I do say the prayers. I am a Christian, but I don't have to go to church to believe it. I, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. I, I'm on the same page. But, but what, I'm, what I'm getting at is the, the, you, you say that you're not educated, yet you're getting information. And there seems to be an inherent contradiction in not being an educated person, yet being an informed person. And I'd ask why you wouldn't seek to be an educated person as well. In which way education? Do you explain that to me? So, I, when, when I read books, because I, that's what I rely on for information, mm -hmm. I am seeking to understand the, the world around me, both through facts that describe things, concepts that explain how things change over time, and to create a worldview that allows me to critically view what's going on, whether or not I should take the medicines that are prescribed, because sometimes doctors screw up, whether or not I, I should eat this or that for breakfast. And and you, you said that you don't always commune with the spirits. So you are making choices. And you stress me a little bit about daily I'm talking about, I am connecting with this universal energy yes. that comes in. So, like, I've been in hospital this week, and I have a lung infection, and the doctors gave me large doses of steroids. 
I knew intuitively and was being told to get off them because of the side effects. So I checked it out. Yes, I did look on my computer and I had all these side effects and I thought, that's not for me, I don't want it. So I am tuned intuitively from a higher source of telling me what, what information they want me to know. So, so, so I guess what I'm getting at is, could you turn this around and consider it, are the dead people trying to educate you and make you more informed? Maybe, yeah. yeah. And would you continue to educate yourself? Through them, yes, but not through books. Do you see what I mean? So, I, I've, I'm actually dyslexic, so it's very hard for me. I'm dyslexic Yeah, yeah. So, I'm just saying that I have, like, some people will have a library of books, and that's great, you know, and then they want to read those books and educate themselves that way. As I said before, if I am drawn to a book, then I will go and read that. Yeah. So that's how I do it. I just go, it's kind of, I'm in the moment, you know, I just live in that moment. Whatever that moment is, or whoever's in front of me, or whatever's happening in that moment, or that I need education in that moment from whoever it is giving it to me, that's how I would. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Two. Hi. In, hi. In the Certain Sense in Murder um, series, could you just describe, tell us a little bit about what you do actually do? Okay. And how you actually talk to people? Yeah. What your day is? Okay. So, with the sense that you want me to talk about the sense in Murder? No, no. Oh, with my dad? Just every day? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so, 
yeah, it's like really no, I love, you know, just to meet all of you, have a chat, see what you think, answer your questions, me tell you as well. So yeah. And um, by the way, I didn't ask the TV to come along. It wasn't me. Okay, I didn't ask TV three to come here at all. No. <laughs> so so um, that's the thing. So. I mean, you know, it wasn't about being on telly or, or what they want to do with it. I mean, they might cut it all off and chop it off and I'm an idiot, but that's okay. You know, so, yeah. So, just the enjoyable afternoon, basically. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I went to the to a Kelvin Crook Shanty. Sorry? Talked, I went to the line to one of the Kelvin Crook Shanty. Yeah. And he was talking about the zone that he gets into when he communicates with Spirit as being like that zone in the half away car like in the store, you know, you kind of have a way, have a sleep, and he says he can get into that state pretty much at will. Does that really develop you? Yeah, I mean, um, it is like that. Sometimes I just, you know, I like meditation, just sitting in my mind and going into that zone, right? Um, we're all different, but um, he works, maybe works differently to me, you know, but you do get into that zone when you're ready to work, it's like, okay, right. And that's what I do, you know, so you must do the same thing. We actually don't communicate with each other. <laughs> he does his thing and I do mine. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Hi. Um, I'm struggling with how to phrase this. Um, so effectively, you're hearing voices in your head and thinking about other people who hear voices and either locked up or yeah, locked up zero yeah. world or yeah. Are you just a highly functioning, schizophrenic is not quite the right word, but... Uh, I, don't, I, well, I don't see myself schizophrenic. Yeah, but what is the difference? And have you actually worked with these people? Are yes, I have. I have, I have actually. I've had some people come in my room and they go, I see spirit and I hear them in my voice telling me to speak my cut my wrists open. That's very different. Spirit doesn't tell me to go and do any of that. Spirit will never tell you to harm yourself or anyone else. So they do have an issue, you know. I have to be careful because I was doing a, a talk one time and um, people got really annoyed with me because I said I'm not schizophrenic. There were some schizophrenics in the audience. And so they were very happy with me. But the thing is, right, um, the tone I hear, the voice I hear is very neutral. It's not a Birmingham accent, okay. It is not, it, it's a very... Um, gentle energy, a very gentle tone. Sometimes I hear them really loud, and sometimes I hear them in my mind, okay, right? And I'm literally turning around and even said to my family, Did you call me? And they go, No, it's your friends, okay? So <laughs> the thing is, yeah, so. See, the way you speak about it is the same way I hear what's in my head, but I'm told I'm bipolar and those voices are loud. Okay, so. tablets and they don't feel right, you take them or you just do what they're telling you? No, I'm not talking about a doctor. I'm talking about a doctor. So if a doctor says to you, we're going to prescribe this medication because you hear voices in your head, right? You have a choice whether you're going to take it or not. That's the set, isn't it, Marina? If you think you're normal, because I think I'm normal, Right? What makes you think you're not normal and that you're like me? So the different, yeah. But it's a different communication depending on what that your mind, your brain is saying to you. Do you understand? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi. So thanks for coming today. Um, I was just wondering, you said earlier that you think lots of other people call themselves cyclists are charlatans. I was wondering um, what criteria do you use to decide that you think another cyclist is legitimate or a charlatan? Well, I do what? So I think so, it's a charlatan. So if you see another cyclist and you decide, oh, I, don't, I think they're lying or I don't think they're type, being honest, how do you decide? Do you mean that, like saying that to other mediums? No, um, it's just you mentioned earlier you think there is something to give cyclists a bad name because they're not being yeah. legitimate. And I was wondering, um, how you decide whether you think the psychic is or is it legitimate? Because I, I think you, you know that um, when someone comes to me and you know they've been told by a person that they've got something attached to them and you know if you give me some money I'll get rid of it for you. Okay? I, I deal with a lot of uh, the Indian communication uh, community. And you know, I have met a lot of them that come in because there are these witch doctors or whatever you want to call them, and they'll say that someone's put a curse on you, like that. And I, I you know, it's not. It's what you know. They are going. If somebody tells them that, then all these little things start to happen, right? Then they start to believe that they actually are cursed. Okay? I don't, you know. I don't believe in black magic and I don't believe in voodoo. I think that's all to do with the mind, okay? And I don't believe in that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm unlucky. I need to ask the right. second question. Um, so if anybody else wants to speak, feel free. Do you fear murderers because... If, Sorry? Do you fear murderers or criminals because if you are indeed solving these things... I'm sorry, I've been the show. Yep. If you are indeed engaged in these activities, why would they not see you as a threat? Um, would you not? Well, I have, I've had my life threatened. Okay, so what I do is it can be very dangerous because I'll find out. You know, you go, when we work on this that program, Sensing the Letter, we're, we're dealing with a lot of gangs as well, drug addicts, and we're dealing with these really high criminals, right? And then you bring information out, you know, they're going to want to um, do something to you, okay? But I believe that I'm looked after. If I'm meant to go that way, then I will. I can't walk around being frightened every five minutes because I've worked on a case and you know that that person or that gang doesn't like it. You know, I believe fear breeds fear, so I don't go out looking for it. So it doesn't bother me. If I, I'm going to get killed, which I should know, um, <laughs> I, I probably should know, but I'm not going to. So yeah. Which they could easily get rid of me. Oh. So I was um, an usher at. Sorry. Sorry, I, just want I, to take this off for a I was an usher at one of your um, meetings in Nelson a few years ago, and um, I noticed that um, probably more than 95% of the audience was female. Um, I also noticed one guy um, elbow his partner when she went up, got up to step, asked a question, trying to get him to sit down. With so what, um, why would you say it's mostly female, at least in that audience? I don't know really. I mean, um, men are coming more to the shows, you know, but um, I don't know, maybe it's the instinct of the female energy, you know? Um, so I can't really answer that. I don't know why. That uh, why most women come along, you know? Sometimes, um, you know, their partners dragged along, they don't want to be there, you know? So, um, yeah, so it is changing though. You know, quite a few men will be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, where are all the women? Okay, more skeptic men than women then. Okay, yeah, anyone else? Yep, uh, you mentioned that you're working, oh, sorry. On, yeah. you mentioned you're working on a high profile case at the moment. Is that with the police or with the family? Or, or it's with the family and the and, uh, private investigators. Yeah, uh, they approached me, I didn't. I didn't go looking for it. They approached me, but I brought some information up that has not been out in the public or in the paper, and that they are looking at that. Yeah. So when you work on a big case, you spend 12 hours, must be quite an exhausting process and all that, and, and you pick up nothing, nothing comes of it. How do you reconcile that? Why does that happen? And do you feel embarrassed for the families who are relying on you to find something so that they can find the murderer or find the dead body? 
So when you say I get nothing, I usually don't sit for 12 hours and don't get anything. Really? Well, I look an idiot, you know, I mean, you've got to imagine, you know, TV is spending a lot of money sending those film crew out, etc. So I'm not going to sit there. How are they going to make a program on me saying, I think it's a female and she's dead? How are we going to run a two hour program like that? So it, it doesn't happen like that. You know, it doesn't. Thank God it doesn't. I'm looking an idiot. You know what I mean? So you've got to be on the ball. You've got to work. You've got to do your job properly. You know? Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, any further questions? say that you can uh, pick a charlatan when you see them, but can you pick 10 on the cycles when you see them? Yeah, I mean there are some good ones out there. And are there any in this room? We'll have to overlook them, maybe. You know? well, we're in a sceptic society, they're not going to put their hand up, are they? <laughs> 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 yes, <ma 'am. laughs> hey, sir, I just want to say a big thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. It takes yeah. a lot of courage to come and talk to people like me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in, the, in this process. So you're, you're talking to dead people and you're communicating through the energy of the universe. Am I understand yeah. that right? Yeah. So we talk about a lot of other energies in the universe. It's bubbly full of light and sound. And blah, blah, blah. Do you ever get any interference from other energies in the universe? With I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to mention extraterrestrial to me. Yeah. Well, not you're all about that. <laughs> You mean like they're coming in? I'm, I'm not with you. But do you mean like any other energy? As in? Yeah, there's lots of energy in the universe, right? Well, it, it, I mean, the universe is made up of energy, and I do believe we're not the only people in this galaxy, okay? Does it interfere? Pardon? Does it interfere with, with the no, message? No, no, not really, because, um, no, I mean, you know, there, there are. You know, the, there's things out there that we can't explain, but I believe that there are other existence. I mean, I went, look, I, 2011, in October, I went to the pyramids. If ever you can, go to Egypt. They were not man-made, mate. I'm telling you. They were not man-made. Don't go to Egypt now, because there's a bit of a war on there, but I'll just say that. <laughs> no, not at the moment. When it's gone. But, um, you cannot comprehend the size of those. It's unbelievable. And when you get into the chambers, how it's built is unbelievable. I mean, even today with our technology, we find it very hard to build them. You know, they are, they're just amazing. So, if ever you, you know, you've got some spare cash, go to Egypt. It's amazing. Okay? Yep. Yeah. No, oh, sir. Hi. Um, just going back to the question of testing. You said that you've been tested on sex and murder, correct? Yeah. And uh, you've closed one of the cases out of 14. But you also indicated that you can't guarantee that the evidence you gave was the police used to close the case, right? correct? Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. As I said before, because I give what I'm getting. Okay? Right. And what happens, I didn't know this till all the series were finished. When, we're, when I'm in the room, there is a person at the back of the room, okay, first of all, everything's documented. It's written as well, plus recorded. So it's documented in case we have a power of faith or whatever, it's written down. And then there's a person at the back of the room who actually has a checklist, okay? So they're checking what I'm saying, okay, okay. to so see if it's real, true, yeah? So my question then is, um, given you've got one other four success rate, then can't guarantee that it was due to your work. As tests go, do you think they qualify for the past or not? I don't know really. I mean, as I said before, I I just go in there, do what I'm going to do, and come back down again, right? And they pass the information to the police, or new leads will come up, and they go and investigate them. But they, they don't phone me up and tell me anything. It's finished, it's done, and that's it. They won't even, you know, tell me anything about it. So I don't know anything about it. I've got to tell you, this is so funny. Um, anyway, when people ask me and they go, um, oh, you must know, you said to where you were go, 
body. Well, the first one I done, okay, they phone you up about a week before and they say, we want you to do a case, will you be free on this day? And I go, yes or no, okay. And then um, they'll say, on that day, you've got to be ready at 7 o'clock to be at the airport. So I'll go to the airport and I'll stand there, it's so funny. And they say, go up to the counter, there's a ticket there. Now people go, I go to the counter, we just want to have a bag. And I go, you've got a ticket for Sue Nicholson, where are you going? I said, I don't know, I wouldn't have blue. And so people look at it and go, well, I thought you were signing. No, this is, <laughs> this is the second time, it was really funny. So she, the lady at the desk looks at me really weird, like, you come here, you don't, have you got any luggage? No, I've got no luggage. Because you're there with that, very rarely you stay overnight. The second series I was doing, and it came on television, well, I thought, oh, here we go. Walked up to the counter, she goes, you're that woman off the telly? I go, yeah. She's where are we off to today? I said, I don't know. And she says, I thought you were psychic. You should know where you're going. You know, but I don't want to know. I don't want to know where I'm going. Because then people can say, you, she knew where she was going. She looked it up on the um, computer. Now, how are we going to look up something on the computer? What we're looking for? And I don't work on a computer, okay? I don't like computers. You know, maybe I need to learn that. But anyway, um, yeah, so we have, I have some funny things to say to me. But, um, you know, I have a funny sense of humour. Yeah? Um, I just had a, a quick question. Um, I was just wondering um, what it is your understanding of the term sceptic is. What is the term to sceptic? That you don't believe in very much. Okay. <laughs> That's my terms. That um, you don't believe in people like me. Um, not sure if the world is round. Um, <laughs> um, is there a God? Is there a, a Jesus? Was the Je so I just know that um, it's things that you're not sure about and you like to discuss them. You know, and that's my open view of it. That's all I know. Um, for the record, we are pretty confident on the world being round. Okay. <laughs> just for the record. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad. Yeah. Okay, uh, take um, maybe one more question. If there's someone else who wants to ask a question. Uh, all right, then. Um, I just want to say thanks, everyone. I've had a great afternoon. <laughs> this will go down in the records in history. The disciple came to the skeptic chart. Uh, yeah, so, you have a good rest of your evening. I think you're all going to, some of you going to have a link. Is that right? And, um, and so enjoy the title. <laughs> what was that? I've never heard that before. <laughs> what did you say? Oh yeah, I know, it was on this badge. Oh. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything, but we've been asking... I know what you're going to say. What's in that envelope? Well, but we've been asking everybody to do it, so, yeah. so I'm not singling you out. But um, would you care to uh, put down a guess? I'll do it later. <laughs> As you wish. <laughs> um, okay, well, thanks everyone. And, uh... Cold case story. <laughs> <laughs>